today's speaker. So today's speaker is uh, Thierry Bolino. Thierry Bolino is research director and professor at Ecole Polytechnique in Palaiso near Paris. And he is also the director of a very big lab, which is, which is called Center of Applied Mathematics and which takes him a lot of time. So thank you uh, even more for being willing to talk to us today. In view of this, uh, the field of uh, scientific activity of uh, Thierry Bodineau is uh, PDEs, uh, uh, probability theory, random processes, disordered systems, dynamical systems. And he uh, applies these uh, techniques in particular to a thing which is, uh, I think, to interest of really of nearly all of us, namely n body, uh, the n body problem for interacting systems. He has written a lot of uh, things about lattice gases, about spin systems, like uh, the aspects of the Ising model, and he uh, analyzes questions in, uh, related to, to uh, from the point of view of statistical physics, that is to say, equilibrium, phase structure, interfaces, fluctuations, percolations, and uh, similar things. His uh, emphasis is maybe more on, on lattice models, and so in the title of today, it is emphasized already that this talk will be about a continuum model, namely the continuum sine Gordon model. And he uh, talks about the Lox Hobolev inequality for this model. So happy to have you here, uh, Thierry. Thank you. Thank you very much for this uh, introduction and for this invitation. It's a uh, it's really great pleasure to, uh, to, to give this talk. Uh, uh, on a joint work with uh, Roland Bauer Schmidt, uh, and um, we've been working on deriving lox sobolev inequalities for uh, interacting systems. Uh, and today we'll um, explain to you a general criterion on lox sobolev inequality we've obtained uh, and its application to this uh, continuum sign garden model. So um, the talk uh, first will start with uh, recalling what lox sobolev inequality is, and in particular, uh, a uh, very famous result by uh, Bakri Emery. Uh, and, and then I would like to um, re uh, show that uh, renormalization can be uh, helpful to uh, improve uh, uh, this result. And in particular, I'm going to recall uh, the, what's known as a Polchinski equation uh, um, on the evolution of some effective potential. And after that, I will explain how the Bakri Emery uh, criterion can be improved in a multi scale Bakri Emery theorem and conclude then uh, with an application of this uh, criterion to uh, the continuum uh, sine Gordon model. So that's basically the, the program uh, for, for this talk. Um, let, let, me, let me start uh, by uh, first uh, recalling uh, what log sobolev inequality is and, and what it's for, basically. So um, the starting point um, is uh, stochastic dynamics, as the one uh, written here. Uh, and this stochastic dynamics is reversible uh, with respect uh, to some invariant measure I'm going to call mu. And um, our uh, goal uh, is to understand uh, if we start from a measure uh, which uh, initially might be given by f0 times mu, so away from this uh, invariant uh, equilibrium measure, uh, our goal is to understand how uh, the measure mu t uh, relaxes as time uh, t goes to infinity. So there are many ways to uh, measure or to quantify the distance between the measure mu t and uh, its invariant measure or the invariant measure. Uh, and one uh, very um, convenient and relatively strong way is to compute the relative entropy between mu t and the invariant measure. So relative entropy is nothing but taking the expectation of a function which is ft log ft with respect to the invariant measure nu. So ft being the um, radon equivalent derivative of mu t with respect to nu. And to, uh, as, as I'm going to use heavily <laughs> this um, function u log u, it's going to be called phi over uh, throughout the talk. So the, the, the point uh, is uh, that the log Sobolev inequality uh, um, is a functional inequality which tells us that for if you take any function f positive, uh, then uh, you can control uh, uh, this um, difference, uh, namely uh, the expectation of phi of f minus phi, the expectation of f uh, in terms uh, 
of uh, a Dirichlet form, or more precisely, what's known as the Fisher uh, information. So uh, knowing uh, this um, type of inequality for any f and being able to quantify this inequality in terms of the constant lambda uh, leads actually to a very strong um, form of relaxation because uh, the entropy uh, decays exponentially fast uh, to zero. So it's uh, through this log Sobolev inequality, one can obtain very quantitative estimates on the relaxation of some stochastic dynamics to its invariant measure. Uh, um, and this is measured uh, in terms of lambda, which is the constant in the log Sobolev inequality. So um, in order to, to explain how uh, this uh, exponential decay is obtained, uh, um, I would like to um, introduce a few uh, notations which will be useful throughout the talk. So basically we're starting uh, from um, a stochastic dynamics, but these stochastic dynamics can also be represented in terms of some semi-group uh, and the function ft uh, basically uh, is given by the evolution of the initial data along the semi-group uh, generated by uh, the following generator L which is the Laplacian minus grade ash gradient. So this stochastic dynamic boils down to, to write the, this, uh, this uh, semi-group uh, representation. And what we have to do now is take the derivative of the entropy and see how the log Sobolev inequality uh, is going to be helpful. So taking the uh, derivative of the entropy uh, uh, boils down first to uh, derive phi, and we see that now ft uh, evolves according to, to the generator. So we, we just need to do um, some integration by part, and I'll, I don't want to detail the computation, they are fairly standard. Uh, and, the, and one can basically rewrite uh, the derivative of the entropy in terms of uh, the gradient of uh, the square root of pt f0, so basically of, of ft. So what log Sobolev uh, inequality tells us, so all that, the, the first part are identity, and what log Sobolev inequality tells us is that essentially one can estimate this part uh, by plugging again the uh, entropy uh, on the left hand, on the right hand side, and therefore leading to this exponential decay. So uh, the difficulty of the log Sobolev entropy is that since we don't know anything about PTF0, we need to establish it for any function f. So that's, uh, that will be uh, our goal. So let's imagine that usually we would like to, to take function h of this form, possibly a quadratic form plus some, some potential. Uh, um, I'm still describing this evolution of a stochastic dynamics in Rn. Uh, and the great thing with uh, the, the result by bakri emery uh, is that basically uh, if the potential h is strictly convex, namely if the Hn of v is positive and if, uh, let's say, the quadratic part is bounded from below, then uh, the log Sobolev inequality holds uh, and the, the constant uh, is exactly given by lambda, or sorry, it can be estimated by lambda and the, the lambda which, which is here. So what is extremely interesting with this inequality is that in a sense, it's fairly general. You don't need to know much about the potential uh, provided you have a bound, uniform bound on the convexity, uh, then it leads to some log Sobolev inequality and therefore to very strong control of the convergence. So it's like we have a ball in the potential and it just falls down uh, to, to the bottom of, of the potential. Of course, uh, uh, the simplicity hides uh, the fact that uh, it's somehow limited to a convex potential uh, and, and therefore uh, potentially delicate to, to go beyond this class of, of potential. So again, uh, let me tell you very uh, briefly uh, how uh, this inequality can be derived uh, because it will be useful uh, for what we're going to, to do next. So the log Sobolev inequality, uh, I reminded you, is, is written here at the top. It's a difference uh, bounded by the Fisher entropy. 
And, and the whole idea is to say, well, this difference between uh, the expectation of phi of f and phi of the expectation of f, I want to view that as an interpolation. And I want to view that as an interpolation along the semi-group of the generator of the dynamics. So basically, at time zero, the semi-group uh, is identity. At time infinity, the semi-group tells us that essentially uh, it has converged to uh, the expectation with respect to the invariant measure. And this difference is nothing but uh, looking at the interpolation between time zero and time infinity. And once we've written it in this way, it's exactly the same computation as before. Uh, we integrate between time zero and infinity the derivative and the derivative we just computed before. So uh, the, the link between this difference and um, the Fisher uh, information is kind of straightforward. What is, of course, much more delicate is then to relate this quantity uh, in terms of just uh, uh, Fisher information associated with F. And that uh, relies on delicate computation, or at least one delicate computation, uh, um, uh, which boils down to derivate or take us, uh, the derivative another time with respect to, to time uh, and, and then use the, the convexity. Once this is established, uh, this term can be then bounded uh, and uh, we recover uh, the estimation we, we wanted initially on the log sobel f inequality. So the, the proof uh, uh, is strongly uh, or relies heavily on uh, a semi-group structure uh, and the natural semi-group is the one of the um, Langevin um, or, or Glauber dynamics uh, uh, associated with the, the dynamics. So we, we are of course uh, interested in. Okay, so let's, that, that was uh, a, a few um, <coughs> information, let's say, on, or, or, or recap on the log sober f inequality. Uh, and now, uh, of course, what we are interested in uh, is in general, in statistical mechanics, are uh, potential which are far from, from being convex. We, we want possibly some um, convex interaction, uh, but then uh, modulate it with uh, some uh, external po or some potential, which could be like phi four or something like that. Um, actually, we we don't even expect to have a, a, a nice log Sobolev inequality, which would hold uh, uh, very generally, because for such kind of potential, we we have different phases, there's some phase transition, and and this will impact the dynamics. So. What we are actually interested in is uh, to estimate the log Sobolev inequality, but depending on the temperature and depending on the volume or the domain in which uh, the, the dynamics uh, is running. And there, uh, we, we, we want to keep track of this dependency uh, in order to provide some information on the, on the relaxation of the, of the dynamics. So, um, what do we know? Uh, um, just very briefly, what, what we expect, and we know relatively little, uh, is in the phase transition region, uh, uh, this uh, log Sobolev constant should diverge with lambda, and uh, in a very, um, and, and this divergence might also depend on very many features, including uh, the boundary conditions and, and other uh, delicate parameters. So I won't say anything about that. What is known instead uh, is that when the temperature is high enough, uh, uh, one can control the log Sobolev constant uh, uniformly with respect to the size of the domain. So the, the system essentially is at equilibrium in a, there's no phase transition, uh, um, correlation decay fast enough, and as a consequence, as the system is well behaved, the log Sobolev inequality is, or oh, constant is well behaved, and the dynamics is well behaved. So this started um, a long time ago by work by Struck and Degalinski and Yoshida uh, as well has made several contributions. Bernard Helfer and has been working on that, Le Doux, uh, um, and I mentioned also a more recent work by Otto and Reznikov. And basically what is uh, fairly well understood is this region uh, I point uh, here uh, 
where uh, the system is unique. And the, the reason why it's well understood is because uh, the, the measure is almost product. So uh, le let me very briefly, because I, I won't go in this direction at all, uh, there has been also a result on, on a more delicate case, uh, uh, namely conservative dynamics uh, by Mens and Otto and Hong and Mens uh, in particular. So um, what, what can we do uh, is, um, of course, the measure is not completely product, but uh, if one look at it on, on a proper level in terms of, of blocks or spatial uh, blocks, uh, there's a kind of decorrelation uh, and one can exploit this block decomposition. Uh, and this has been done uh, um, quite intensively, mainly in the case of Ising models. So just plus and minus one, the discrete case, the continuum, uh, uh, continuous spin are, are, are a bit more delicate to handle. Uh, and um, if one knows how to, uh, this decay, uh, one can quantify properly this decay, one can get um, some um, estimate on the log Sobolev constant, but there are very few control uh, close to the critical uh, temperature. So also in the, in the conservative case, um, the, the, the block decomposition is, is very uh, important, and uh, in particular in this work by Otto and, and Mens. Now the, the question I, I would like to address is, can we say something, let's say, close to the critical point? And so in general, we, we don't know how to do that, um, but uh, we, we would like to um, get some strategy or try at least to address this type of question for, for some class of models. Just to, to, to fix the, the idea, let, let me start with uh, an example uh, um, uh, to, to show what, uh, what is difficult and what, uh, what we can hope to, to do. So it's a sine Gordon model. Basically now we, we have this quadratic uh, interaction of nearest neighbor, so we are in 2D. Uh, let's say the domain is of size N, zero boundary condition, Dirichlet boundary condition. Uh, and this, there is a, a potential uh, uh, modulated by this uh, factor uh, gamma. So in this case, uh, as soon as the size n is uh, larger than the square root of uh, one over square root of gamma, then, then the system, uh, the, the potential is no longer convex uh, and one cannot uh, use uh, back Riemri estimates because this, this Gaussian part has only um, a, uh, is, is only bounded from, from below by, by um, identity and a prefactor decreasing like one over n square. Instead, this um, interaction part or this potential uh, uh, as um, an Asian, which is uh, always uh, strictly negative. However, uh, one, one can view uh, this uh, slightly differently uh, and imagine now that uh, I'm going to, to freeze uh, all the spins around the, the one right there in the center. Uh, and um, once all the spins blue are frozen, then the, the spin in the center, when, when the, the neighbor are frozen, the spin in the center is going to fill the convex potential. Because uh, in this case, at least if gamma is, uh, is small enough, because uh, essentially that, that's a kind of potential which is felt. By, by the spin in the center. So we, we, we have to understand how uh, uh, the, the scale are actually um, entering into the dynamics. Because on the one hand, we have this very short range perturbation, which is strongly non-convex. And on the other hand, we have this long range correlation uh, in, the, in the Gaussian part. Uh, uh, and we have to, to extract from some control from one part uh, to, to, to the other. So this, this model is just to, to give an idea of, of what we're going to try to do, even so we're not able to derive much in this uh, particular case. But, but the question, uh, as I mentioned, the scale is, how can we use the renormalization group to analyze the dynamical features? Uh, of the, this uh, problem, and in particular, to, to, to get, for example, uh, estimates on the log Sobolev uh, inequality. So, um, 
we we what we going to show now is uh, the a multi scale battery emery criterion uh, and this will be achieved uh, by um using a polshinsky uh, equation so uh, polshinsky equation has been uh, as his name uh, says it has been introduced by by polshinsky has been studied by uh, many people uh, um, I'm going to, we are going to, at least in our paper, rely very much on the approach by uh, David uh, Bridges and Tom Kennedy. Uh, and so I'm, I'm mentioning in particular this paper, which was um, a very important source of uh, inspiration uh, for what we, we've been doing. So uh, let me now um, forget for a moment the log Sobolev inequality and introduce uh, this uh, Polshinsky equation and, and explain how, how this uh, renormalization works because we, we're going to use it heavily. So again, we are starting from some Gibbs measure um, uh, with a Hamiltonian uh, given in two parts, um, uh, a quadratic interaction plus some, some potential V0. So when V0 is actually equal to zero, the Gaussian measure as a covariance C infinite given by A minus one. So suppose that it's well defined. And, and this covariance uh, can be represented as the integral of the exponential minus TA. Um, let's now decompose the Gibbs measure. Huh? I'm going to call it mu zero now. For, for some of them earlier, it was just called mu, now it's called mu zero. And I want to decompose uh, this Gibbs measure. Huh? Uh, as follows. So it's the, the expectation with respect to the Gibbs measure is just the Gaussian integration of uh, a function f and this potential exponential minus v0. So e uh, without double bar, c infinity is just the Gaussian integration with uh, the covariance c infinity. So let's split the covariance into two parts. Uh, uh, one uh, will be denoted by CT for uh, the, the short scale. Uh, the rest is CT minus C infinite minus CT. Uh, and uh, our field X is now the sum of two fields, phi uh, slow and zeta fast. Um, okay, so we, we use this, this Gaussian structure, the independence of uh, both uh, Gaussian field, uh, phi and zeta, and first integrate with respect to zeta, and then integrate with respect to, to phi. Um, let, me, let me, okay, just uh, remind you, so we're trying to extract um, some information or to decouple the information between this long range part and this short range. Um, for later purpose, so CT, is just a part of the integration. I'm just integrating now between zero to t and c infinite is the full covariance. So ct can be seen as some averaging. So we're averaging on blocks of size uh, square root of t, something like that, on domains of size square root of t. So now we've decomposed the covariance into two parts and um, we have to build uh, what is the renormalized potential, uh, and it's called, uh, let's call it uh, Vt phi. Uh, so uh, by definition, uh, uh, it will be given by the expectation with respect to the short part, uh, so covariance ct of the potential, just the integral with respect to zeta, the, the short scale. And exponential minus vt is, is defined in this way, depends only on the, phi, on the field phi. So let's, by force, uh, impose a, or create a, a potential which is exponential minus vt phi. And over there, it's now a function of phi, only phi, because zeta has been integrated here. And we call uh, nu t the, the corresponding renormalized measure where the field zeta has been integrated. So now this is basically the integration with respect to nu t. And the whole thing inside, uh, which boils down to take into account the integration with respect to zeta, well, we will simply going to call it the Polshinsky or related to the Polshinsky semi-group, uh, just um, um, a semi-group uh, which uh, takes the function f uh, 
does something to it after the integration and uh, it goes uh, between, uh, let's say, T can be seen as a time or it's, um, it's correspond to the fact that we integrated up to um, the covariant CT. So in a way, uh, what this uh, procedure gives us uh, is um, a, a way to rewrite uh, uh, the Gibbs measure, nu zero, in terms of a renormalized measure, nu t, and uh, the deformation of the function f by the Polshinsky semigroup. So these are the, these are the important features uh, we, we are going to use, uh, uh, namely the, the, the new measure nu t and the semigroup. So in fact, uh, what, what is very nice with this semigroup uh, is uh, its structure because it looks very much like um, the dynamics we introduced uh, originally, the, the stochastic dynamics. So there is a Laplacian, uh, there is uh, the gradient of some potential V, so before it was a gradient of H, H times the gradient. Of course, it's a bit more complicated. It's time, in, it's time dependent. So you can't just, I mean, when you take the time derivative, you have to be a bit careful. But, but still, the, the generator looks very nice. And uh, we, we're going to use, of course, this uh, analogy, uh, analogy strongly. So uh, let me tell you what this Laplacian is, not quite the standard Laplacian. Uh, it's, uh, it's a Laplacian modulated by uh, something like the covariance, actually the derivative of the covariance, so it's exponential minus ta, and the gradient vt grad f is also modulated by this c dot tt. So the, the generator or, or, of uh, this uh, time-dependent uh, uh, semi-group uh, uh, has a nice structure, even so the evolution depends on vt, so makes it uh, complicated because uh, VT uh, itself uh, satisfies some evolution equation. It's a Hamilton-Jacobi equation, and it's um, it's not necessarily fun to uh, to analyze. So anyway, we 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 have a, a good tool at least uh, to to work on now or to work with, uh, and uh, the, these are the the few uh, the important ingredients you you have to to recall for the rest of the talk, uh, a renormalized measure, a semi-group with a nice feature and an effective potential which solves uh, a kind of ha Hamilton-Jacobi equation. So the, the criteria uh, we, we obtain uh, to, to prove the, or which shows, or which implies the log Sobolev inequality is the following. Suppose that we now have a potential uh, H uh, uh, which has a form like some Gaussian part, uh, some potential V of T. And suppose that the Gaussian part is bounded from below, uh, but that the, um, the not V, we, we, we don't ask for a condition on V, we actually ask uh, for a bound from below on the Hessian of VT for any T. So imagine that we are able to, to control uh, the Hessian of VT for any T, uh, then uh, one can prove uh, that the log Sobolev inequality holds uh, with a constant gamma, which can be determined in terms of the parameter lambda and the parameter mu t, which is actually the integral or given by the integral of mu dot. So uh, these two parameters, lambda and mu dot, uh, are uh, going to uh, imply uh, a log Sobolev inequality uh, provided, of course, uh, there's some convergence and we, we can actually uh, make sense of this, uh, of this integral. So in a sense, uh, uh, this criteria can be seen as a multiscale back Riemri because um, we are asking uh, for a convexity at every scale. Uh, sorry, we, we're not asking for convexity at, at every scale. We, we're asking for a condition on the Asian at every scale the Asian may not be strictly positive or positive as in the Bakri-Emery criterion. It doesn't matter 
uh, if mu dot uh, is negative sometimes. What is important is that all these uh, integrals uh, make sense and ultimately converge. Because as we've seen in our original example, uh, there might be uh, at certain scale uh, some convexity or some, some structure. Uh, and, and the hope is that um, this structure evolves uh, along the renormalization process, uh, but uh, properly uh, renormalized, the potential gets more and more convex uh, or convexifies. Uh, and therefore, uh, we would keep still uh, a good uh, control of the, um, of, of the potential uh, or deviation of the renormalized potential. So, the criteria, in a sense, is, is more complicated because uh, we have to uh, analyze uh, the action of VT along the, the flow of the renormalization group. But uh, the, the hope is that it's more efficient and it would apply um, in more general cases. So, in fact, there are, uh, so this is just one criteria. There, there are many criteria possible which can be obtained uh, in the proof. And actually, they also depend on the way uh, one decomposes the covariance associated with A. But uh, at least this, this is a concrete uh, example. I just want to, to give a few words on the proof uh, because um, I think it's interesting to relate it with the actual uh, bakri emery proof, which I've sketched earlier. And, and the idea is to say, okay, before we had the semi-group, which was given by the global dynamics, uh, uh, we're going to replace it with the Polshinsky semi-group. Uh, the LT is uh, the, gener the corresponding generator. And uh, this semi-group uh, also uh, can be used to interpolate between these two terms. Namely, uh, when nothing has been renormalized, the function f uh, is equal to itself. It's uh, p0,0 zero, zero is the identity. And in the limit, when all the parameters have been integrated, uh, when t goes to infinity, well, the, the, what remains is, is just the expectation of f. So over there now, the time t uh, should be understood now as a, as a, a scale, uh, a, a time to which quantifies on which scale the renormalization uh, is. The proof uh, uh, is essentially of the, of the same nature <laughs> Turns out that this analogy with the Glauber uh, or the Langevin uh, dynamics uh, um, is, is, um, <coughs> holds uh, very well. And uh, when one takes the derivative of uh, this quantity, so namely now the measure is evolving and the semi-group is also evolving, we take this joint derivative, we end up with a Fisher information which now depends on the measure, renormalized measure at time mu t and on the semi-group at time t. And so again, let me stress that the, the time acts really as a spatial uh, renormalization. So we, we have, or we introduce this criterion in order to be able to um, get um, the analogous uh, estimates as the one I've explained for bakri um theorem, uh, namely that with the previous criterion, we can play um, more or less the same game uh, and show uh, that uh, there's um, um, an inequality which will then allow us uh, to uh, close uh, the equation and recover the, back, uh, the log Sobolev inequality. So what is important now is, is really the fact that um, uh, we are using or looking at the measure evolving with the semi-group, uh, uh, Polshinsky semi-group, and um, turns out that the, the proof uh, of bakri emery can be extended in, in this case, provided one has the, the right criteria. So let's... Um, Let's see now uh, what um, what kind of uh, application can be uh, can be obtained uh, for this. So um, we're going to to look at the continuum sine Gordon model. So actually, as uh, Christoph said uh, in the introduction, I'm, I'm very much into lattice models. So this continuum version will will be uh, on the lattice. Uh, 
but uh, it's just to distinguish it with um, the standard sign Gordon model. So let's let's uh, fix the idea. So now we we consider um, a Gaussian um, measure uh, um, on a periodic domain, and we add uh, a small mass in order to 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 fix uh, the field. So the length of the domain will be 1 over epsilon and the correct normalization is epsilon square. So uh, now in this case, if one look at just uh, the log Sobolev for this uh, Gaussian field, uh, it has a constant uh, which is proportional to a uh, log Sobolev constant, uh, which is proportional to um, epsilon square m square. Uh, what we are interested in now um, is to make a perturbation of um, this uh, Gaussian measure, uh, uh, which is actually much weaker than the perturbation of the sine gordon model gamma I introduced earlier. Uh, um, the perturbation um, is modulated by the, the scale epsilon uh, or one over epsilon of the domain, uh, and the power is epsilon square. Uh, minus beta divided by four pi, and it's cosine square root of beta. So there is also an extra parameter in front of this uh, new potential, which is z, and one has to, to look at beta uh, in this uh, range of uh, parameters. So this, uh, this model is, is actually uh, well known and has been uh, uh, studied heavily uh, with several work which I mentioned uh, below. Uh, and uh, um, one of the nice uh, and interesting feature is that it has many phase transitions. So uh, the first phase transition occurs when beta uh, reaches 4 pi. And then there is a second phase, phase transition at 6 pi, and actually an infinite number of phase transitions uh, occurring uh, for uh, at all these um, beta critical depending on the integer n. So there's, there's a series of, uh, of phase transitions. And uh, what we would like to, to do uh, is now to uh, investigate the log Sobolev uh, inequality um, for, this, uh, for this model. So let me again come back uh, to the um, analogy or to what I said before uh, on the on the Asian. So the, the Gaussian part uh, has now an Asian which is bounded from below by epsilon square m square. So uh, let's say m is equal to one. Uh, and the potential has uh, now an Asian which is bounded from below by epsilon square minus beta over four pi. So it's <clears throat> it's not, I mean, this is going to zero but much less, not as fast as uh, this one. So as such, uh, one cannot apply the, the bakri emery criterion. One needs, to, one needs to do something because this is uh, still much more negative than, than, this, um, than this part. Uh, in order maybe to, to justify this uh, continuum uh, um, name, uh, I would like to, to mention that uh, the, the dynamical sine Gordon model uh, has been uh, studied uh, heavily, uh, uh, starting also by, first maybe by, by work from Daprato and, and Debuch uh, up to the critical temperature, the first critical temperature, but uh, uh, it has been then uh, extended uh, and um, up to the 8 pi uh, threshold uh, by uh, Chandra, Eirer, and Chen. Uh, and uh, this uh, requires, of course, uh, uh, heavy uh, machinery for the renormalization with a regularity structure uh, which uh, has been uh, developed uh, over the past years. Uh, and, and to make sense of this equation, a uh, counter term uh, have, to, have to be uh, introduced. Uh, um, in order to, um, when, when the noise zeta, uh, the white noise is modified, the, the counter term is, is there to, to stabilize the, the whole equation. So there, there's, of course, a, a strong analogy with uh, our uh, lattice version, uh, um, which uh, can be uh, rewritten uh, as follows. So this is the corresponding uh, stochastic uh, dynamics uh, um, associated with um, 
the continuum sign Gordon model I described earlier. So in this dynamics, uh, uh, if one wants to, to see something, uh, times, time needs to be rescaled by one over epsilon squared. That's uh, the correct uh, uh, length or uh, time window uh, in, in order to, to see some uh, evolution of this, uh, of this dynamics. Uh, and over there has been uh, rescaled already. So this, this is the reason why there is a epsilon square there. Okay, so what, what is, uh, what is uh, the, the result we, we obtained with uh, Roland Bauer-Schmidt? Uh, we, we have shown that uh, for beta less than six pi, so basically uh, up to the second uh, phase transition, uh, um, one can prove uh, a log Sobolev uh, inequality uh, which uh, decays uh, uh, with respect to, or the, the, the log Sobolev constant decays uh, with respect to the system size. And then there's some uh, constant gamma, uh, which um, can be e even uh, computed uh, relatively precisely, or at least uh, there are good quantitative estimates uh, on gamma, provided the, the parameter, the Z and M are related in a, in a proper way. So, so we have a fairly good uh, control on the log Sobolev estimates uh, and, and this uh, one over epsilon square is exactly the, um, the speed uh, at which the, the Laplacian or the uh, Gaussian uh, dynamics uh, have, has, to be, um, has to be renormalized to, uh, to, to, to be uh, visible as the correct, uh, the correct speed. So, um, what is, uh, what is our strategy? Well, we, we're going to, to check uh, the, the criterion um, I've explained uh, before uh, and um, prove that uh, the action of uh, the uh, Renault effective potential is larger than some constant mu dot uh, t uh, for, for any t. So for that, uh, um, we now have to, to look uh, closely at the Polshinsky equation and, and look at uh, and try to, to understand the evolution of this potential uh, along this uh, hamilton jacobi equation. Uh, the typical estimates uh, one gets um, is that this mu t dot is, is actually uh, negative. It's always bounded by some negative uh, constant, uh, but uh, as you can see, uh, uh, this uh, decrease or tends to zero when uh, t goes to infinity, meaning that um, the, the bigger uh, the, the size of uh, the renormalization, the, the better the action of the potential becomes. And that's the reason why we, we can hope to, to, to renormalize it. So actually, this is correct up to uh, the renormalization size. Uh, uh, which is one over uh, epsilon m because uh, beyond this scale, uh, nothing happened. The, the system has been fully uh, renormalized and, and it becomes um, uh, well, well behaved. So, uh, it, so the, the um, mu dot wouldn't uh, decay in this way after that. So uh, to, to analyze uh, the uh, Hamilton-Jacobi uh, equation, uh, we, we are going to proceed uh, as in the paper uh, by uh, Bridges and, and Kennedy uh, and what, they, uh, what they're doing, uh, because they, they've been uh, using this uh, Bolshinsky equation to, to renormalize, uh, uh, to, to, to follow the, the, the flow of uh, the, the renormalized potential. Uh, um, so the strategy is actually to, to decompose V uh, uh, in a Fourier, uh, Fourier transform. Uh, and um, a Fourier transform, which is um, uh, a little bit um, special, uh, I should say, because um, instead of uh, having a standard, I mean, coefficient, uh, um, the, the Fourier transform will be decomposed uh, in terms of um, charges, uh, sigma i belongs to plus and minus one and position xi. And uh, decomp uh, decomposing uh, in this way uh, uh, is another way to parameterize the, the Fourier transform. So you, you may have several uh, charges of the same sign uh, 
uh, as the same place or, or eventually plus one and minus one which are which are cancelling but it doesn't matter it gives a it gives a way to represent the the Fourier transform uh, and um, this uh, this has been um, obtained by analogy with the uh, Yukawa uh, gas. So the the initial data or the the or for for our equation is uh, relatively simple because uh, we are starting from um, sorry maybe I should have, have uh, insist on that. So v tilde n is now um, the Fourier coefficient we are going to follow, and uh, v tilde n is going to change with with time, and v tilde n is uh, indexed by this. Um, position and charge um, variables. So initially, actually, uh, all the V tilde are equal to zero with the exception of the one where there is only uh, one, uh, one uh, particle, let's say, or one charge. Um, and this is given by uh, epsilon square minus beta over four pi, and all the rest are uh, equal to, to zero. Uh, now we can rewrite the Hamilton Jacobi in terms of of, uh, of the, the Fourier variables. Uh, so, and uh, what happened is that uh, there is a first term uh, which is uh, quantifying, let's say, the, the decay, and then uh, the next term which are um, interacting uh, or which are representing the interaction between uh, the different Fourier uh, coefficients. Um, it turns out that in this representation, uh, so the, the first coefficient interacts only with itself. The second one uh, is fed by the first one and so on and so forth. So there's a hierarchy of, uh, of coefficients uh, which uh, is reminiscent of uh, hierarchy in, in particle systems. Uh, so in, in this representation, of course, we, we started from, sorry, uh, maybe I should. Uh, we started from uh, an Hamilton Jacobi equation which depends on c dot t, namely on, on our covariance, uh, and the covariance uh, has uh, some, some impact uh, in terms of this function u dot. So w is also depending on u dot and therefore on the, on the covariance. So the, uh, the, the force mode, as I say, uh, is actually depending only on, on itself and uh, can be uh, computed. Uh, and as you can see, it's, uh, it's a decay, it decays uh, when uh, the size of the, of the renormalization uh, grows. It turned out, uh, and it is much more complicated to, to obtain, and that was uh, part of uh, all the, the contribution uh, of uh, the paper in the paper by uh, Bridges and Kennedy is that all the other modes uh, can be computed and bounded uniformly as soon as beta is less than four pi. So up to the first uh, transition, uh, uh, all the other modes are in control, uh, are in control and they can be bounded uh, uh, in terms of, of quantity uh, uh, which are of this nature. Therefore, uh, since all the modes are controlled, the, the potential is controlled and we can control its action uh, as well. So that's, uh, that's how we, we proceed. Um, however, when, uh, when beta uh, is, um, is larger than uh, four pi, uh, then we, we run into trouble. Uh, and in particular, uh, the second mode uh, blows uh, in, if one look at it in the, in the uniform norm. So uh, one needs to, to, to be a bit more careful uh, there uh, and, and use some, some renormalization. Um, and, and in particular, uh, the fact that um, what, what we actually need, maybe I should have explained that uh, here, uh, what we actually need uh, is a bond on the Asian and uh, times uh, uh, this um, operator c dot t. So it, it's something which is average uh, and, and we need some averaging and not just the uniform norm uh, to, to bound the Asian from, from below. So uh, as soon as one goes uh, beyond the four pi, uh, one needs to, to take care of, of that. And it turns out that between four pi and six pi, uh, 
uh, one can control the second mode uh, after renormalization and and we can control also the others and then there's another threshold uh, uh, beyond six pi which we we haven't uh, worked uh, out uh, where there are further uh, further terms which are blowing and which will need to be controlled and so on and so forth we, we actually hope that uh, the the criterion should go beyond four pi but, uh, six pi but uh, we we haven't uh, we haven't made uh, this um, yet so um, i would like to to conclude uh, also before by uh, or before concluding i would like to mention uh, two 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 things so we've been um, working for some time with roland on this type of approach and in particular uh, in the case case of hierarchical models uh, we we were able to um, derive the poincare inequality and actually with this method the log sobolev also uh, would go through uh, in the case of uh, hierarchical model for the sine gordon now uh, not with a small uh, epsilon uh, to square minus beta over four but like uh, a parameter let's say as gamma as before we were able to get also estimates uh, on on five four uh, but in both cases it's limited for the moment to hierarchical model renormalization has been also very useful uh, um, a useful way to to average out some interaction and by using uh, similar tricks uh, we were uh, able to get bounds on Sherrington Kirkpatrick uh, model in a relatively uh, simple uh, simple way so these are um, also uh, related words so let me now I guess it's time let me uh, conclude uh, um, this this talk so uh, just to to summarize so we've been using the <clears throat> uh, Polshinsky renormalization in order to produce a fairly general uh, criterion um, which uh, should be um, useful uh, to analyze the loxobolev and more generally uh, the relaxation dynamical relaxation of uh, interacting system now this criterion uh, uh, has to be uh, checked uh, uh, and it's certainly model dependent uh, and so far, we have been able only to uh, do that uh, for the sine Gordon model, and we hopefully uh, would like to to, to uh, obtain further result in for other class of of models. So, thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Thierry. Uh, I think we are not so numerous, so maybe you can ask questions directly by um, manifesting yourselves. And by uh, switching on your, your sound. <laughs> yeah, uh, Manfred Salmhofer, can I ask a simple question? Your, your gamma is non uniform in epsilon. Yes. So the decay vanishes as epsilon goes to zero, which would be the continuum limit. Yes. Is that the expected behavior, or is it an over? Uh, what, what, what do you mean that expected behavior uh, well i don't know what 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 you know one might expect heuristically for the decay of an entropy in, in the continuum system oh in this case uh the the okay so in this case what's what's happened is that uh essentially um so this um e even though the the limiting model is not gaussian uh the 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 gaussian uh structure or the, the Gaussian part uh, has uh, already a decay in one over epsilon square. So uh, this um, this is the, the, the decay we, we capture here. And then there are uh, corrections. Uh, some of them can be seen in the prefactor gamma. But uh, in terms of uh, in terms of scaling, uh, it is uh, it, it is uh, the, the the one. Uh, Given by the the Gaussian uh, the Gaussian field. Well, I guess my question is that that if you um, if you view the quadratic part of the action as a Riemann sum approximation to a continuum action, and this epsilon squared is really just it has to be there, right? Uh, so if in the integral, it would it would disappear. And the, so 
Yes. Financial decay, yes. which is a pure and that limit. Sorry, I don't see which, uh, what do you mean, which integral? I'm confused, sorry. Uh, was before? Show the action here, yes, just here. Yes. Uh, you have you have epsilon squared m squared x i squared and, and in the yes. first term you don't have any epsilon because you have sort of epsilon squared divided by epsilon squared. Did you think of a yes. lattice spacing yes. of order epsilon? Yes. Yes. So if I if I think of this now as a as a Riemann sum approximation to a continuum model, this would be just minus Laplacian uh, plus m squared. Yes. But in the end, in the exponential decay, you have an epsilon squared in the numerator in the exponent, right? Or did I not understand this right? So that's in the continuum limit. The, the, the uh, Maybe I can add to that if you can hear me. Yeah. Can, can you can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Uh, I I it, this is the the correct uh, scaling. If you uh, I mean, this epsilon squared is an artifact of the fact that we're viewing the continuum system as a lattice model. Um, but if you scale everything in the continuum, uh, this becomes one. I mean, if you rescale, so you have to rescale space and time, correct, in the parabolic yes. way. And this I'm sorry, possible. maybe that's, that is a quick one you want, Peter. So oh, over there, yeah. indeed, you have, you have uh, the, the correct epsilon uh, squared here. If you wish to time, and this uh, this is after a, a prefactor which is needed to uh, to renormalize the the equation. No, but the time rescaling makes it uh, very scale by one over epsilon squared when this factor goes away. Yeah. So that that is the one which is the main term which is captured by the log Sobolev indeed. Uh, can I ask a question? <coughs> Oh, yes. Ah, yeah, this is anti Hi, thanks. Yeah, thanks right. for the talk. Uh, <clears throat> so what, what kind of, so in the end, uh, uh, if, if I think about the continuum sign Gordon, you, you can control, you sort of can control the infinite volume limit if you keep this master or uh, yes, I mean, with what what this uh, what this uh, okay, I didn't uh, talking about the infinite uh, or the the, the limit. Uh, what's happened is that uh, sorry, maybe it will be clearer here. Uh, we can add like let's say a term L uh, divided by epsilon or something like that. So uh, I, I, I didn't add this extra parameter, and the log Sobolev is uniform with respect to the extra L. So the, the log Sobolev uh, is, is only proportional to the one over epsilon, fits your question. Yeah, so, so but of course what one expects in the San Gordon is that even without the mass term. Ah, no, that is a... Okay, that, without that, the mass term, you still have mass. Yes, yeah, but that, that, that we can't, uh, that we, we far from, from saying stuff like that, yes. Okay, but uh, then a second question, why do you have to, do you really have to worry about these different phase transitions? Because usually they are just things which you see in the, in the free energy, but they shouldn't really contribute to. Uh, it, as a matter of fact, no, they don't contribute, but uh, when, you, when you have to, to compute the, or when you, when you start computing the, the effective potential, uh, and you need some control, uh, well, sorry, uh, over there, for example, uh, the, um, it, there it can be seen as some technical uh, problem because uh, it's a convenient to, to study or you can study the, the Fourier transform in terms of, um, sorry, you can study uh, the, with uh, the, the Fourier transform with respect to the uniform norm, nothing blows. Uh, and, and then it's getting much more sensitive to, to the type of, of norm. So the, the potential is, is more delicate and there are some stuff to, to renormalize. Even so, ultimately you, you don't see them in the, in the dynamics. Yeah, I suppose if you did a hierarchical model, you wouldn't have this problem. Uh, on the hierarchical model, there are some, some simplifications, which, uh, which actually allow not to even consider small, small uh, perturbations. Yeah, 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 I think the hierarchical model, you don't see it. It's, it's, it becomes rougher as, as beta gets closer to 8 pi, I guess. 
So these so are the neutral, neutral, neutral code. Code. Okay. So, so they're really not. I'm sorry. Sorry. So they, uh, uh, these are really the wave function renormalizations. So they, you don't see them in the, in the hierarchical model. No, no. The 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 hierarchical, there are there are many actually. The this type of of uh, criterion are are easier to uh, to 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 establish uh, in in this case, uh, and and the decomposition is is uh, neater, uh, but. Um, we were not able to to go beyond the so far to, to go beyond this continuum sign golden model in the, on the lattice. Hello, this is uh, Stefan Holland speaking. Hello. Hello. Uh, yes. Could you remind us um, this work by Ben Fato on the on the uh, on the sign golden model? What uh, Range of uh, coupling constant was he able to 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 deal with? Do you can that be compared to your analysis? That I forgot. I think they were able to to reach. Uh, were they able to reach eight pi? I forgot uh, that. Maybe these first papers by Ben Fato and Galavotti, they they were going able to go roughly to up to the first or second threshold in a similarly okay. explicit way. Then there is this uh, paper, this Nicolo Ren Steinmann, these Dimark Hurd papers, which were able to go up to eight pi. Mm -hmm. Did that answer your question? Sure. Yeah. So I just uh, didn't remember that so well. And 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 as in as far as other models are concerned, which which you have an unbounded uh, potential, is there? I mean, there your 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 way of probably uh, estimating the effective potential doesn't doesn't work. But is there a way of of still using this? Uh, this so the the, the I mean, the, there are several features, but uh, in, including um, let, let's say the the five four indeed the fact that it's unbounded would would be a a problem. The they 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 are uh, there are several uh, issues, uh, um, but. I mean, the, so so far, the, um, what what we were uh, able to to show is this uh, uh, continuum model. But and even uh, in in the case of uh, uh, a parameter which is not decaying, like gamma, uh, the unboundedness uh, or the, the the fact that it's bounded is still not enough to 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 control very well the the renormalized potential. We just may, maybe to to understand what is the difficulty. Uh, is um, we we asking for something which is uh, possibly uh, I mean which is very strong uh, because we 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 would like to to control uh, fully uh, the renormalized potential because the Luxobolev applies on uh, arbitrary type of functions so um, it, it's not like we can do the renormalization on well chosen test functions. Uh, uh, as it's done in equilibrium, there we we need to to have a, a good understanding of arbitrary function, uh, and and that leads us to ask something very very strong on the on the effective potential. And 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 this is um, is um, one of the of the difficulty after because the, the analysis uh, requires to be a pre pretty precise in including. Uh, uh, in region which uh, are usually uh, can be can be um, uh, neglected or uh, when when the, the the field is is very well uh, he'll behaved uh, we still need to say something i mean uh, to maybe to add uh, to uh, stefan's uh, question i mean the the five four in the hierarchical case that uh, it goes through so it's it's even unbounded there but uh, somehow the large fields are much easier to uh, uh, much more explicit to uh, to understand in that case than in the, in the, in the Euclidean case. Uh, may I ask a question, Felix Otto here? Hello, hi. 
Can you hear me? So, uh, so it's uh, it's more on the uh, on on this multi-scale criterion. So, if I understand correctly, in a certain sense, the data you're given is a, is a matrix A and the A harmonic potential V. Mm -hmm. And now you're decomposing the inverse of A, so the covariance, in a, in, in a way, and now you use a very specific way of decomposing it. Yes. But, uh, but in a certain sense, those are the two ingredients which, you, uh, which you're using there. Yes. Is there, do you have some kind of, let's say, geometry function, some kind of ge geometrical intuition of function space that tells you what a good decomposition of the covariance is. I mean, you took a canonical here, but I think you mentioned by you mentioned yourself that that was you could have taken other ones. Is there is there kind of uh, you know given the A and given the V, is there do you have some intuition? What's no. a good strategy? No, they, um, okay. I mean, usually it's uh, it's relatively convenient to uh, when when the A uh, has as a form of um, of a Laplacian to to consider uh, to consider this decomposition in terms of the the random walk because uh, one has uh, at least a, a good feeling and when, mm -hmm. when and the proof requires uh, after when you have to check it on model per model the, the proof requires. Uh, fairly precise analysis of uh, green functions and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, now, uh, I agree that there are many uh, options and there are uh, some options also um, when you, one does the, so, oops, sorry, uh, over there, huh, when one does this uh, Bakri uh, Emery uh, strategy in order to, to, uh, uh, to recover the, the convexity, uh, uh, there are different ways one can interpolate. Uh, so the, the bakri uh, uh method um, uses, um, let's say, a semi-group, and you interpolate, uh, uh, you, you put the semi-group uh, a little bit here, another one there, and you interpolate between the, the two. And over there, it leads also to a, a series of, um, of um, criteria, which are slightly different. Some of them, for example, could be applied in the, uh, in the hierarchical case, uh, and this one not. Um, so far, I don't really, uh, I, I can't give you a generic way to, uh, I mean, they, maybe tomorrow somebody will come with another decomposition, um, which might be much better, I don't know. I mean, the, the, uh, using the um, uh, exponent, I mean, the, the random walk uh, on the lattice, uh, Seems yeah, and I agree that in, it's it's very natural, and of course, since you're interested in explicit models, that's uh, mm -hmm. that's what yeah, that's very natural. But, but uh, they could be they could be many. Thanks. So, are there further questions? So and just let me ask you also an important point in your approach is that you can really uh, what, uh, do what you do without uh, doing any kind of cluster or uh, expansion or whatever. Or does this appear somewhere? We, we don't use cluster expansion uh, for this work. There, there was some cluster expansion in the paper by Bridges and, and Kennedy. Uh, could potentially be very useful uh, if we wanted to to tackle all other models, but in this case, no, we we didn't. Thank you. Are there any further questions? Or so maybe then we we will stop here. Let's thank Thierry okay. very much for this nice and clear talk. Uh, the next talk will be on October the eighth by Slava Rishkov, and uh, hope uh, to meet you again there. Okay, well, thank you very much. Goodbye. <laughs> Goodbye, Jerry. Thank you very much. Bye -bye.